Back again with another DC Character Histories video. Sorry for last week that I wasn't capable of getting one out. I just didn't have enough time to make a proper script for it, but I was capable of taking the time this week to create a script for a new character. There's so many characters in the DC universe that I do love getting characters that I don't really know much about, and this week is a character who's gone through quite the history, and I didn't even really know much about him at all. I did know some, but not everything. This week's character is all about the character Damage, and Damage has two different versions in the DC Universe. There's Grant Emerson and Ethan Avery. Grant Emerson's version is more of a biochemical based type of hero, whereas Ethan Avery's version has been depicted to be very similar to the Hulk from Marvel. The two versions do have some similarities, but today's video is going to be all about the Grant Emerson version. So just like usual, before we actually get into his history, let's start with his character data. His first debut was Damage Number 1, which was April 1994. His real name is Grant Emerson. His base of operations is usually Atlanta or New York City. His eyes are brown, hair is brown. His powers and abilities, he basically has a biochemical fusion reactor in his body which provides increased strength, durability, and energy projection, but he is capable of so much more. His allies are the New Titans, Justice Society of America, Liberty Bell, and Judo Master, and his enemies are Zoom, Symbolics Corporation, and Baron Blitzkrieg. So Grant's origin, in high school Grant was constantly changing schools due to the fact that he was having trouble with the authorities or just by simply being expelled. His parents also worked at the Symbolics Corporation which required them to move around quite often. When moving to Atlanta, Georgia, this is where Grant's powers began to manifest. He started to experience highly increased speed and endurance and used this to destroy a car with only one punch. Grant continued to develop his abilities shortly after, where he became very, very powerful at the age of 16. Speed and endurance was just the tip of the iceberg. He also gained super strength, invulnerability, flight, and energy-based powers due to the literal biochemical reactor his body imitates. Grant ended up getting into a fight with the Superman villain, Metallo. Grant did win the fight, but it resulted with him losing complete control of his powers and destroying the place they were fighting in, his high school. After such a catastrophic event, destroying his high school and everyone in it, wondering how he was given these powers, Grant learns that his parents aren't his biological parents at all. His adopted parents, John and Kate Emerson, tell the Symbolics Corporation that Grant's powers have truly manifested. They were soon after murdered, with Grant receiving no answers. Trying to learn and control his abilities and be a superhero, he encountered another threat in Baron Blitzkrieg, who has enhanced strength, can fly, and has heat vision. Grant won the battle again, but unfortunately he lost control for the second time. This time, the result was the destruction of downtown Atlanta. Grant Emerson was arrested and placed on trial, where his lawyer was capable of brokering a deal where Grant could continue to be a hero only if he joined the new Titans, which he did. So his time with the Titans and his past, Grant stayed with the Titans for a short time before deciding to leave and search for answers about his true origin. On his journey, Grant learns that the Justice League villain Vandal Savage was behind the experiments from the Symbolics Corporation that gave him powers as a child. Grant finds out that he shares the DNA from multiple metahumans such as Adam, the Al Pratt and Ray Palmer version, the Flash, Jay Garrick and Barry Allen version, Green Lantern, the Alan Scott and Hal Jordan version, Wildcat, Hawkman and Hawkgirl, Our Man, Dr. Midnight, Starman, Miss America, Johnny Quick, Liberty Bell, Black Canary, the Dinah Drake and Dinah Lance version, 
Martian Manhunter, and Aquaman. So just a little bit of an explanation there. The reason why Grant is given double powers from certain characters like Adam and Flash and Green Lantern and Black Canary, it's simply because he is gaining powers from the modern day heroes and he's also gaining the powers from those heroes from the Golden Age, so from the old continuity. So somehow, some way, they got their hands on DNA from the older heroes that don't really exist anymore, and they implemented it in Grant's body. Grant then finds out that Baron Blitzkrieg, who he fought in Atlanta, was also allied with Symbolics and became a recurring villain for Grant. Grant would also find out that the original Adam from the Golden Age continuity, Al Pratt, was actually his real father. After finding out about his real origin, he had to remain on the run and hide from the authorities. Grant even saved Florida from a nuclear meltdown and still was not granted immunity due to breaking the deal he had with the government and the Titans. Even after trying to ask the Justice League and the Titans to join the groups, they each said no, which left him to continue his hiding. Eventually, the original Titans, who happened to be Nightwing, Donna Troy, Arsenal, Flash, the Wally West Flash, and Tempest, they reform the group. When nominating new members to join, Arsenal chooses Grant and finds a way to erase his criminal record. Grant is no longer a fugitive, now a member of the Titans, and more prominently goes by Damage. Down the line, the Titans disbanded due to the death of Donna Troy. Damage would soon find a new team to join called the Freedom Fighters. Although this team quickly came to an end in 2004, Infinite Crisis series when multiple members of the Freedom Fighters were killed by the secret society of supervillains. During their battle, Damage suffered extreme scarring to his face from Zoom, or more popularly known, Reverse Flash. One year later, in the One Year Later event, we next see Grant and his costume has changed to resemble his father's costume, the original Adam from the Golden Age continuity. He has the biohazard symbol on his chest and wears a mask like his father did, but to also hide his face. Damage is now much more cynical and explosive due to his insecurities. Our Man and Liberty Bell offer him a spot on the Justice Society of America, which he accepts. The JSA is currently trying to apprehend Zoom, which Damage wants to take part in, of course. Zoom runs to Atlanta, which Damage is no longer allowed in due to his past with that city. Damage ignores that and literally jumps over an entire state just to follow Zoom to Atlanta. After a battle ensues, Damage manages to capture Zoom and holds him hostage in the middle of the city. Damage, being pissed off, creates some sort of aura around Zoom and himself. If Zoom even twitches in the slightest, the aura will activate and the entire city will be destroyed along with thousands if not millions of innocents. Liberty Bell enters the scene and helps Damage realize that what he's doing is wrong. Damage then releases Zoom from the aura, but right after, Zoom grabs a piece of sharp metal and throws it at Damage's head. Liberty Bell uses her super speed to save Damage and throws the metal back at Zoom, knocking him out. Gog, an almighty being from a place called the Third World. When the Third World was destroyed, it gave birth to the planet's new genesis and apocalypse. Gog comes to Earth and begins to perform miracles, one of those miracles being the healing of Grant's face. Multiple JSA members begin to follow Gog, almost like a lord and savior type figure. Damage is one of those members who joins Gog. It is then revealed that Gog is rooting his power into the Earth. The more people who worship him, the more powerful he becomes. And if Gog ever decides to leave, Earth will be destroyed. The JSA and other heroes join forces to defeat Gog, which they do, but that results in all of God's miracles reverting. Moving into a very popular event in DC Comics, The Blackest Night, which deals with many heroes falling and the rise of Black Lanterns, 
damage was killed by Gene Loring, who at the time was the current embodiment of the demon Eclipso. Eclipso was also in the body of Gene Loring when she was trying to prepare Mary Marvel for Darkseid's arrival, and if that does not sound familiar to you, you can listen to that story in the Mary Marvel video I uploaded last week, so check it out if you haven't seen it. Damage was the last death needed for the Black Lanterns to reach full power and to bring Necron into the fold, the embodiment of death. Damage as a Black Lantern attacks his former team and his friends, the JSA. Although Damage claims that his mind has been unaffected by the power of the ring or Necron himself, and sacrifices himself by trying to destroy the other Black Lanterns attacking the JSA headquarters. The Black Lanterns regenerated and of course come back to life, and Mr. Terrific, who was a Black Lantern as well, states that Damage only sacrificed himself in the hopeful outcome that it would have destroyed the JSA base and a ring would reach Superman and turn him into a Black Lantern. So who's telling the truth? Who really knows? But unfortunately, Damage is not seen after this and it is assumed that he returned to a corpse after the Blackest Night events. Judo Master, a highly skilled martial artist, a member of the JSA, and the love interest to Damage, gives a eulogy at his funeral. She learns and grants Will that he wishes for a relief fund to be started for people who may have been affected by his powers. Well, there's a brief history about Damage. And honestly, he had kind of a rough go at it. Constantly on the run, wasn't capable of controlling his powers till he was a little bit older. He was just dealt a really rough hand. Now, as for the second Damage, like I said, there is another iteration of him starting in the New 52. It's not Grant Emerson, it's somebody else. And the powers are a little bit different. Like I said, he does seem to be more of like a Hulk in the DC universe. Universe. I didn't research too much about him and I don't think he has too many stories the way that Grant Emerson has. Grant Emerson does seem like a character that they could use more prominently in the DC Universe anyways, and who knows, maybe one day we'll be able to get him on the big screen in some way, maybe a TV show, maybe a movie, who knows. But anyways guys, that is it for this video. If you did like it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all the future content I've got coming out. And until next time, I will talk to you all very soon.